Since 1992, DW Fern mic preamps, equalizers, and compressors have been used in some of the world's best studios, as well as in private use and home studios around the world. This tutorial will help you get the most from your DW Fern products, learn what each control does, and see the best setup starting points for a variety of recording situations. Learn how to interface our products with the rest of your studio gear. Take a peek inside and see how our products are made and learn from Doug Fern's experience in over 40 years in pro audio. Another factor that's important in the sound of a compressor is the shape of that transition from where it's going from uh, linear, uncompressed, the input level and output level are, are exactly the same, to where it hits the threshold and now the signal is starting to become compressed. If that's very abrupt, it has a different sound than if it gradually transitions into that compression um, regimen. Oftentimes that transition from one to the other is referred to as the knee of the compression curve. It's called that because if you look at the way it's graphed, it sort of looks like a leg and the knee is the point where the, the uh, compression curve changes from linear to, to compressed. And that's another characteristic that can affect the sound of your overall compression. Now the way the um, harder, softer control works on the VT7 um, requires a little bit of delving into the internal circuitry. When uh, any compressor is designed, there is a what's called a side chain internally in the machine that determines the characteristics of the compression. It determines the range of the attack control, the range of the release control, it determines the ratio, it determines the shape of that knee in the compression curve, and so on. And um, so designers make decisions on what characteristics they want in the side chain. In order to make the VT7 a little more versatile, there's actually two separate side chains in there. They're both fed in parallel, and um, each of them has different characteristics. One has a higher ratio, a, sh a sharper transition to compression, and so on. Has uh, faster attack and release times. The other one has just the opposite. It has a lower ratio, um, a more gentle transition from uh, uh, linear operation to compression, and so on. And what you can do is, is go from one side chain, the harder side chain, to the other side chain, which is called the softer side chain. And um, we could have just put a switch in here so you could select one or the other. But think of this harder, softer control as actually a pan pot between those two side chains. So that you can not only go from either only the harder side chain or only the softer side chain, but to any combination in between. And this, of course, changes the, the character uh, of the VT7 sound. Now, on a lot of material, you could go from one extreme to the other, and the difference is going to be very, very subtle. You'll hardly notice much difference at all. Uh, on other material, the, 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 the change from one extreme to the other can be quite obvious. Um, so you have to use your ear to adjust this control, as you do on, on most controls in audio. As a starting point, I would recommend right in the middle. For many people, that's the place where they set their VT7 and, and use it in that position the majority of the time because that accomplishes uh, what they want to do. But feel free to, to try the extremes or any place in between to fine tune it to just the sound that you want. You can use the two channels of the VT7 completely independently on two completely separate sources. They could be uh, separate instruments completely. They could be uh, snare drum here and kick drum there. They could be bass on this side and a vocal on this side. You can use them separately, adjust the controls completely independently. They're completely isolated so there'll be no bleed between them or anything. But one of the things the VT7 is used for quite frequently is as a stereo bus compressor uh, during a mix or even during mastering. And to do that, you can use the two channels on the left and right uh, pads of your, of your signal. 
Now, if you do that, you can set all the controls so that the two sides have exactly the same settings and the exact same uh, compression characteristics. <clears throat> but what happens is, and this is true of any two compressors, even if they're identically matched, the stereo image may shift around with compression. And this occurs because, let's say you have a mix that starts out with a lot of material on the left and relatively little on the right. So the left channel may be well above the threshold of compression. There may be compression going on, whereas on the right, there's no compression because the signal hasn't gotten loud enough there yet to, to cause any compression. So what happens is if you're listening to the mix, anything that's in the center is going to be shifted to the right. The whole mix will shift to the right because that channel has more gain now than the left, which the gain has been reduced. Uh, sometimes this will be a good effect that you'll want to use, but the vast majority of the time you won't. You'll want to have the two channels track together properly. And that's what this center position of this switch does. The first one is separate, which means the two channels are completely independent. When we switch it to the link position, now the two channels track together. The loudest signal on either the left or right will determine the overall compression for both channels. That way the stereo image remains constant throughout. That's the way you'll use it most of the time. And you see now when we have it in the link position, we can turn this control the threshold control on the right channel all over and it makes no difference, but the threshold here on the left controls both of them together. When you're in the link position, only the controls on the left side control the whole uh, characteristics of, of the whole of both channels. There is one exception though, and that is the gain control, because if we look now, if we turn the gain controls down, we have 5 dB compression on both channels, and we switch the VU meter, you see we've reduced the gain by 5 dB on both sides. We bring this back up to our zero operating level, but you see this one stayed down, so we have to bring this one up as well. And the reason we do that, it gives you the opportunity to fine-tune the balance between the two channels, even when you're in the linked mode. So, in the linked mode, only these controls affect the compression, these controls are all disabled with the exception of the gain controls. They're still active on the right channel as well as the left. This control in the middle has a third position called Link HPF. HPF stands for High Pass Filter. You know, when we were talking about the side chain, we talked about how that determines the characteristics of the compression. Let's say you have a mix that has an extreme amount of bass content maybe a kick drum that's, that's way up front in the mix, and you want to uh, add compression to the overall mix, well, chances are that um, bass drum or kick drum is going to control the overall amount of compression on the mix because it's going to be the loudest thing the compressor detects. <clears throat> when that's the case, the, the, the kick drum is going to actually modulate the level of the whole mix, so you'll hear everything else dipping down at each kick drum hit. That might be what you want. Sometimes that's an appropriate effect, but oftentimes it's not. And in order to get around that, we've added a high pass filter, which is a device that cuts out low frequencies in the side chain. It's only in the side chain. It's not in the overall audio path. We haven't changed the frequency response of the VT7 at all. We've just made the compressor less sensitive to low frequency sounds. That way, those that low frequency kick drum is not going to control the overall compression of the mix. And also, when you switch to the link HPF position, you'll notice that the overall bass content of the mix will go up. It'll simulate more accurately the sound of the mix, the balance between highs and lows that you had before you added compression. So. The link HPF position is probably the one you'll use the majority of the time when you're doing a stereo uh, mix. But if you don't need it, the link position may be uh, just the one you need. We haven't used actual program material in this video because you need to do this in your studio with material you're familiar with and have time to sit there and turn the controls yourself and hear what changes as, as you adjust things. 
The VT7 is found a home in many studios for tracking and especially on the mix bus. It's used in mastering to provide that extra little bit of magic uh, during the, the mastering process. And many people found now that this is the key element to their signature sound. They use this on their two bus all the time in order to achieve a consistent sound that, uh, that they find is um, desirable to them. I'll tell you a little story about the VT7. Early in its development, <clears throat> I used the VT7 on a mix with a group that um, uh, with just a little bit of compression, we were showing maybe 3 dB on peaks during during the mix. Uh, the client wasn't there during the mix, I was doing it on my own. And when I finished it, I decided to, to make two versions of it, one with the VT7 in the path and one with it bypassed by turning the threshold control all the way down. And I made a CD for the, for the uh, performers, gave it to the group leader, with two cuts on it, one with compression, one without compression. I didn't say anything about what the difference was between the two. I said, listen to these and tell me which one you like better. He got back to me a couple days later and said, oh, I like the second one much better. That was a much better performance. We played much tighter. The reality was it was exactly the same performance. The only difference was the compression. And that's one of the magical things that the VT7 can do. It can actually make the performance sound tighter and more together, more cohesive. And that's one of those kind of characteristics that is very hard to describe. You have to experience it yourself in your own studio with your own material and just see how it pulls everything together, makes it sound from uh, more like a record, you know, rather than just a, a, a demo recording. So I hope this has been useful to you, and now you can go out and try these things with a VT7 of your own, or obtain one from one of our dealers to experiment with and, uh, and see what you can do with it.